Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So in this video, we're going to pick up this car again. And what we're going to be working on is the dash. I think I have all the pieces here that we can start on the dash. You guys know that I like to use a lot of reference when I work. My method is to create collages of any relevant images, place them inside Maya's image planes, as well as print them out. Having the reference printed and available on my desk is especially important to my workflow. In visual effects and desktop publishing, being able to see your screen clearly without glare is important. I like to work with the lights off because screen glare is a big issue for me, and traditional desk lights cause a lot of glare. This brings me to today's sponsor, BenQ. They let me test out their Screen Bar Plus desk light. It mounts on top of your monitor and spreads light directly onto your desk and away from the screen. The Plus version comes with an external dial to control brightness and color temperature. I am very impressed by this light. I had no idea a product like this existed. Follow the link in the description for more info. Now we can see the dash comes out this way in this photo. So I'm hoping that this will let me figure out that curve. I'm gonna use uh, just a curve tool. I'm gonna make a curve like this. then what we need to do is we need to create the shape for the dash now the, the dash itself it's got these cutouts for your legs we'll have to work on those after so I'm going to select one two and three and then double click on the loft icon which is this one on the curved surfaces I'm going to go I'm going to reset and show you my settings polygons general quads settings should be fine hit apply so we'll get this shape here now if we go to the inputs tessellate that should be good so now this is basically the shape and I'm I think I'm happy with it this is good now the thing that I I want to do is I want to create these cutouts but these cutouts are going to be a bit difficult because how do we know what the cutouts should be like if I look at the reference and there it is I want to be as exact as I can so I found in the reference and all this reference that I have I found an image that kind of looks like um, like a, a, it's a picture looking right at the dashboard so I'm going to use that and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to clear history on this, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to, in the perspective camera, if we go into perspective shape and then scroll down to environment, I already have a bunch of uh, image planes, but you can have more than one. So I added uh, an extra image plane here. And I just need to find it. And there it is, image plane 9. I'm going to set this to RGB so we can see it. And there is our image plane. Um, let me open up the options again. When you have the image plane selected here, you can see that we can line up um, the car. And in the image plane settings, you have your alpha gain, which is a transparency. And then if we go here, we have the size here. And I'm holding control and left clicking inside. And I can then control the size. And then what I can do is I can try and line up the camera as best I can to this image. So once I kind of am happy with the way it's lined up, I can try and figure out how to uh, create the shape here. And, and one easy way is just to use the multi-cut tool and just make a, a quick and dirty kind of line. So I know the distance here should be like the distance of this. So I'm going to just select this use the multi-cut tool and just make big sweeping cuts this line we don't need for now and then I also want to make sure that these edges are lining up so if I select them like this I'm going to delete half because the other half is getting in the way. 
I select these, go from the side view, you can see what this looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate it in this view, and then holding V, and I'm snapping one uh, direction at a time. When you work on a shape like this, sometimes it's very hard to um, work when it's curved like that. So if we take this shape, move it over, and flatten it like this, make it zero, and Z, freeze it. So from the side, they don't uh, work together. But from the front view, they line up. And that is pretty good because we don't have to worry about things not matching. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to hide these parts here. So we don't have to worry about like hide curves. Uh, about moving uh, vertices around like this because it's flat we're not gonna mess up the shape if we use the curved shape we would mess it up so if I try to let's say move a vertex from the front view and adjust it like here you can see that in, in this in perspective it's moving up like that but it doesn't matter on the flat one what we can do here curves. The reason I, I made these curves is because I, I don't like to make, I don't like to redraw loops. It just takes too much time. So instead, I want to use curves to do it. Under the curves menu, uh, you can click offset curve. And then you can hold control, select the distance, hold control in the middle drag. And you can then offset the distance like that. Then select this curve, press G, it's going to redo it. And then just go in the other direction and offset this curve. Now I'm going to hide this for a sec. And we want to compare because sometimes when you do this, the curves uh, will get will change in, in the number of CVs it looks like here it worked perfectly fine so now what we can do is we can loft between them select this one just using my default loft settings that I had set up before and then add some divisions like this and then these two loft And what I'm looking at, here, I don't really care about what's going to happen, but here I do. I want this to line up. So I'm trying to see that these line up. And if they're a little skewed, it's okay. All right, that's good. Clear history. That's fine. And then I want to bring back. this because what I want to do I'm going to combine these uh, two surfaces so poly combine clear and I want to adjust here just make it match a little better now here I'm going to move this I'm going to hold C middle mouse button and drag over this edge and just move it this way select this edge here extrude make sure keep spacing is off control shift right click turn keep spacing off select this arrow hold V and then we can snap it this way now we can add a loop just a single like that and then we can just close these off if I select here and then here then shift here and here, let's see, will that work? Nope. How about this? Nope. Uh -huh. There.
So once you do this, you can select all the vertices like this, except the corners, and just hit delete. Just gonna get rid of those, and then just adjust any weird things. Okay. Now we have good edge flow. So what do we do next? Well, we need to round it. Now how do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. We have this original shape here, right? Then we have this one here. Now one thing about these two shapes is that they're the same, made from the same one, right? From the same shape. So if I select, let's say this one, and then this one, and then do a blend shape, I can blend from one to the other. But now what we can also do is I'm going to select this shape and then this one and go to the form and wrap. I, I never remember the order how you're supposed to do this, so we'll see what happens. Select it. This guy here. Um, let's see what happens when I blend it. There we go. And you can see what it's doing is it's taking the shape with it, the one we blend shaped. Uh, the one we wrapped. So I can clear history, hide those two, duplicate, flip to the other side, and then combine, merge, soften edge. You can see some of these didn't merge, so we'll go to merge here, hold control, and drag the distance threshold till it merges. And then let's bring back car and uh, panels. That looks pretty good. And then we need to make a cutout for the steering column. And this is boxed in inside. So I'm going to select this edge and let's see if we need to turn symmetry off. Select this edge and then shift double click this one. It's going to select that and then we can extrude like this. Except that in here we need to stretch this. So we're going to undo this. You can see what's going to happen here is we need to make the shape look like that because it needs to hold the steering column. So I'm going to use uh, a lattice here, just add a lattice like this, add a division uh, vertically like that, and that way I can select the bottom lattice points, stretch this out, then we need to pull it out like that. This is not lining up exactly. We can get a guide to line up this. And 
then I'm going to add a loop here. Like that. I want to add a loop like this. We want to extrude slightly off the surface. So when you see this, see how the two and the three, uh, it's not exactly where I need it to be, so you can manually enter the numbers 2.5, that's good. Reverse normals, like that, and that is our piece. Now I think we can push out a little more. See how it fits. Looks pretty good. We'll still need to add a couple brackets on the bottom there to hold it. You can download this project on my Patreon page and please hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe.